paper and sort of indicated the idea. But it, uh, but Gödel never published the full proof because full proof uh, was actually turned out to be quite technical and it only appeared in in a volume uh, by Hilbert and Bernays on, on proof theory. So Gödel said that uh, Gödel theorem in the following way. So uh, let's say piano arithmetic does not prove its consistency. Or a sentence in the language of arithmetic expressing consistency of uh, piano arithmetic itself. Of course, this result holds uh, under the assumption that piano arithmetic is indeed consistent, but uh, uh, nowadays we all, uh, well, the uh, tradition is uh, simply to assume that piano arithmetic is consistent, so uh, it's not a question, so this is a, uh, 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 well, so-called narrow formulation of, of Bill second incompleteness here. Now it was immediately clear that uh, uh, this theorem applies to, to a wider variety of theories like Principia Mathematica and so on and so on. But uh, curiously it turned out to be a rather elusive question to find a sufficiently general and correct formulation of this result. And actually uh, uh, in the 40s uh, there have been some attempts to formulate something which, which uh, happened to be actually wrong. And Kreiser found some obvious counterexamples to that, showing that these, uh, let's say, naive attempts to formulate girls' uh, generalization of that statement would be, would be simply false. And uh, it required some work by uh, uh, Saul Pfefferman. Uh, it was actually his PhD work, which, which he has done under the supervision of Tarski, and uh, where he fully uh, well, he found uh, uh, a sufficiently general formulation of that result. Found some other counterexamples showing that which conditions are necessary, which are not. And uh, uh, since the 60s, uh, this uh, performance treatment has, has become quite standard. So uh, let me first start with this uh, very simple counterexample. Uh, uh, the girl second incompleteness theorem. So the, 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 the gist of, uh, of these early counterexamples uh, was uh, really about uh, the fact that this uh, formula expressing consistency of a piano arithmetic can be formulated in a different way. And actually we cannot, we don't have a fully, <laughs> let's say, <laughs> robust criteria saying what does it mean that the formula expresses consistency. So, uh, to sharpen this question, it's, it's like this. When we deal with a fixed particular theory like piano arithmetic, which is explicitly given to us, let's say, by a number of fine, uh, well, seven axioms and an axiom schema, then of course there is a kind of natural formula expressing this consistency assertion, proof predicate and the associated consistency assertion. But when we want to formulate a general result, like for all theories of a particular kind, that statement holds, then we have to specify what kind of formulas must play the role of this uh, consistency assertion, what kind of uh, criteria these formulas uh, m uh, must satisfy. And uh, this uh, question turned out to be rather elusive, so to say, at first. So the first counterexample is the whole triangle, or let's say Rosser, Rosser's consistency. It's quite, uh, it's quite, uh, uh, Simple. So let's uh, let's first formulate this a particular. Uh, let's modify let's modify the probability predicate. Let's say that uh, the formula X is provable, or is Rosser provable, or provable in a Rosser sense, if uh, there exists a Y uh, uh, such that. Y is a proof of X in the ordinary sense. So this is PRF will denote, the, let's say, the standard proof predicate. And for simplicity, we are talking about piano arithmetic now. And we, we are saying that uh, every number smaller uh, than Y is not a proof of negation of, of X. So we say something like for every Z, every Z smaller than Y, uh, smaller equals than y, like, I would say smaller than y. <laughs> so, 
of <laughs> probable uh, negation of x and y. So this is z. Uh, z. This little neck of x, of course, it's a primitive recursive function which maps the formula x to the formula negation of x. This is well, it is well known that in piano arithmetic this is easily expressible. Uh, and the first remark is that uh, in the standard model, of course, we have that uh, loss of probability uh, is equivalent to the standard probability. Which is, there is a y, yeah, and <coughs> x, y. And why so? Well, simply because we assume that piano arithmetic is consistent, right? So when x is provable, the negation of x is never provable. So this happens even only if this part happens. So this is, therefore, we have this property. But mind that this is only a statement in the standard model of arithmetic. And in fact, if one <laughs> examines the consistency assertion and formulate this Rosser's consistency, which is formulated in the standard way, right? Not there is a proof, or I say, not provable zero equals one or falsity, something like that. Then it turns out that piano arithmetic proofs is all. The Rosser's consistency. Uh, okay, so uh, why so? Well, uh, let's check it out. It's very simple. So, okay, so um, let's look at the at the formula which uh, designates some true statements, like 0 equals 0. And let's consider x, which is a good number of, of 0 equals 0. Uh, well, let's call it m. Okay. Then what do we have? Of course, we have uh, that it is provable uh, that this 0 equals 0 has a proof m. Yeah. But maybe you believe in the negation uh, uh, of the uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe in left, left, maybe mm. you would skip this in the tutorial because th yeah. this, this is sort of easy. Okay, everyone, everyone sees well, this. I would like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it takes one line, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, well, but uh, if you want to skip something, do tell me that, that I should skip because I have a lot of things to say. I, I want you to ignore very shaky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so uh, let M be the minimal proof of, okay, M minimal <coughs> proof in the ordinary sense, of course, of 0 equals 0. Okay, then we have that. The statement that M is a proof is provable. Moreover, we have also the statement that for every Y smaller or equal than M, uh, negation um, of uh, negation of, of that uh, statement is not provable. And this fact is provable because here the quantifier, quantifier is bounded by a fixed number, so it's just checking a finite number of pre primitive recursive facts, so this is clearly provable. So therefore we can reason in the following way. So if, if it is, let's say, if x is a proof of 0, 1, uh, then x has to be bigger than this m. Mm -hmm. And if it is, has to be bigger than this m, uh, well... We need not, it, see that we don't need, need not 0 equals 0, but uh, the negation yeah, of 0 equals 1. Otherwise, uh, 
no, 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 no. Wait a moment. Um, <coughs> simply zero equals one. Not negation of zero. I think uh, something like that, right? Then any m qualifies this, actually. Any any number. M I think the, the, the m should be the minimal proof of negation of uh, e zero equals one, no? Which is the same as zero equals to zero. Uh, no, the six is equivalent, but not probably equivalent. Probably equivalent. Yeah, probably I have a different yeah, yeah. proof for the case. Now we are in the danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but this is just the usual one, PRM. Okay. Wait, 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 about what you, but uh, it, it, it is somewhat uh, again. Uh, we want we want this. Uh, okay, uh, let me tell you. <coughs> to your question is this: this predicate uh, Rosser's probability is sigma one, so it's uh, it's R E. Got it, got it. Got it. And uh, what you are saying is not. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, okay, uh, I suggest uh, <laughs> you can complete this argument to a correct one. So let's, <laughs> let's leave it at this. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at this point. So it's not so so uh, safe to ignore the no. uh, <laughs> You shouldn't ignore the uh, uh, <laughs> No, no, no. Because you interrupted him again, and now he stopped. Let's make sure to start your lecture tomorrow. Yes, I was right. It was obvious. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I'm not going to return to it anymore. And in fact, there will be many such places in my lecture. <laughs> this is just the first example. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so uh, now uh, now that Sasha made this suggestion, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This is of course my mobile phone, but I so uh, you, you should you should switch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But Kole, you were uh, Sasha, you were right, of course, with this negation <laughs> of zero one. That this is the correct. Uh, this is the correct thing. Okay. So uh, mm. second counter example is. Uh, 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 is like this. So it's called Fefferman probability. Um, and it is motivated mot motivated by this um, general formulation uh, that uh, Fefferman gave to uh, to the second incompleteness theorem. And uh, one may actually wonder what's what's wrong about this uh, process probability. Why does it not fit? Well, a naive answer would be, of course, to say that it says something totally different from the what one ordinarily understands under, let's say, derivation, proofs, etc. So it's it somehow has a built-in notion of consistency in some sense. So it says already that it is consistent in some in some way. Uh, we want to avoid such things, and Pfefferman suggested the following. Uh, uh, the following setup. So he dealt with arithmetization of syntax of arbitrary first order series. Well, arbitrary in a countable language, so to say, uh, first order theories, and he embedded their syntax in the language of arithmetic. So in, in the treatment of uh, Pfefferman, uh, 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 he fixed uh, well, he first of all uh, restricted the attention to theories, let's say, 
whose language contains the language of arithmetic for simplicity, that's as, as it's usually done. Secondly, uh, uh, the theories were, were, were given by, uh, as usual, by logical axioms, axioms for equality and mathematical axioms, and these whole logical parts, so logical axioms and axioms for equality, so the logic was fixed once and for all in Pfeffer's treatment. And the only parameter that varied was, uh, uh, in fact, the set of mathematical axioms and the formula defining this set of axioms within arithmetic. So in Pfeffer's treatment, the theory T, sufficiently arbitrary theory T, was given by an arithmetical formula alpha of x, which was called numeration in his terminology, which, uh, well, represented the, the property x is an axiom of t. <coughs> okay. But the word represented has some... Uh, the word represented meaning. has different meanings, has different meanings, and, and exactly that these meanings were explored, so to say, by Beckman, but uh, let's say uh, one simplistic but suitable meaning for us in some in some situation would be that simply alpha of x defines it in the standard model of arithmetic. So, in this, well, of course, what what kind of restriction does it put on t? Well, at least <laughs> in this situation, t would be would would have an arithmetical set of axioms, right? So, its set of axioms would be within the arithmetical hierarchy, right? So that's already some some very modest restriction. But in fact, Gödel theorem applied only to series who had a sigma 1 uh, defining formula, which means the theories which were really recursive and enumerable. So uh, a theory is supposed to be RE and comes together with a formula which is sigma 1. Okay, so when this formula is fixed, then it somehow uniquely defines this proof rate. which also happens to be sigma 1. If alpha is sigma 1, or if R wants to deal with, one can even deal with primitive recursive alpha, because every RE theory is equivalent to a primitively recursively axiomatized theory, this is so-called Craig's trick. But uh, anyway, um, alpha uniquely defines PRF alpha, and already these kind of PRFs alpha is a much narrower, <laughs> narrower class than, uh, let's say, just any formulas defining this relation PRF in the standard model. So in particular, Rosser's probability does not fit this setup. But still, you can have the different alpha which define different sigma 1 alpha which define exactly. the same set, exactly. and you have different dedicates. Exactly, exactly. And this is exactly the point. So different alpha define different predicates. And moreover, uh, there, is no, uh, there is no, let's say, uh, canonical way of selecting such an alpha given a theory t. So if a theory t is just thought of as a set of sentences, then there is no canonical way of formulating such an alpha. Alpha is really an extraneous information, which is... Uh, uh, it also fits with a set of axioms, as a set or not, or you allow arbitrary axioms also. Um, yes, here. No, for so, a fixed set, there is no. So, way so, so, what is fixed? No, 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 is it no, 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 no. If you, if you are, uh, yeah. So, so, so what is fixed? Uh, uh, the, the language of T is fixed. Yes. Everything is embedded into arithmetic. So, syntax is form, uh, notion of formula of T is fixed. A theory is a set of our axioms or a set of theorems. What? Uh, a theory is a set of axioms given by alpha. Uh, so alpha is also alpha comes together with chain. No, no, that's that's exactly the difference. So, uh, uh, in in my uh, let's say uh, theory, uh, when we think about theories externally, so to say, we think about a set of axioms, and when we think about uh, a theories uh, in Pfeffermann's treatment, he supplied he defined them in arithmetic using alpha. Alpha defines mm -hmm. but property of being alpha. A. Alpha and beta will they be equivalent in the standard model or not? That's a question. Or you can also change the set of axioms. As I said, 
have, of course we can change a set of axioms as a set. So this defines various theories. All, all kinds of theories can be defined in this way and one can, one can see that this is sufficiently general. But of course the interesting question is if we fix t and vary alpha, what, what will happen? So that's, uh, that's the kind of question which... Do we assume now that the mapping alpha uh, to PRF sub alpha is fixed or not? Yes. Ah, it's fixed. Okay. It's fixed. Moreover, it, it looks like this. So there is a formula PRF of two variables, x and y, and one, let's say, second, er, second order variable, okay. and we substitute just alpha for the okay. second order variable and obtain okay. uh, sigma y form. So that's, that's how it looks like. And then, so Pfefferman uh, essentially showed that in this situation, when alpha is sigma 1, and theory t is really consistent, then t does not prove. Consistency of alpha. Assuming that alpha is sigma one only. With Assuming alpha is sigma one. Ah, but with the fixed mapping. With, with the fixed, okay. with okay. fixed mapping. Okay. So, that, uh, yeah. So that that was his technique. It has become more or less standard, as I said. It's a natural mapping, yeah. Huh? Normal tricks. It's hmm? a the mapping from alpha to PR or alpha okay. is natural more tricks. That's what you would think of, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's strange. Shouldn't we assume that T contains arithmetic? Of course, no, of, 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 of course. Okay. It, 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 it contains enough arithmetic. So, okay. in Pfefferman's treatment, T contains PA. Okay. But now it applies not only to PA but to various extensions of PA. And okay. In fact, uh, here one can assume much less about T. But uh, okay, so. Uh, so this is uh, this is Pfefferman's, uh, Pfefferman's theorem, sufficiently general formation. It is, I would say, in my in my opinion, it, it has some inadequacy. It still has some deficiencies. This formation, for example, so many theories arising in practice have inference rules, are defined by mathematical inference rules, like induction rule or something like that, or finite induction rule. And um, when we reformulate them these rules as set of axioms, we, uh, uh, having one rule, we suddenly have, uh, well, have to deal with an, an RE set of uh, theorems generated by this rule to define such an alpha, so to define an equivalent theories using alpha. <coughs> and this is not natural, so this, this uh, one can, but one can of course generalize this definition by having alpha defining, let's say, uh, mathematical axioms and another beta well, defining rules and modifying this uh, it's predicate, question, predicate accordingly. Of course, <laughs> of course. So this, uh, but let's say, well, the original framework was like this. It can be generalized, can be modified, but uh, basically it stays uh, standard. Now, uh, that is exactly the question that Kole uh, put, why, why sigma one? Because after all, Alpha can be, in principle, any arithmetical formula, and uh, uh, what will happen? Now, Pfefferman showed that if alpha is not sigma 1, we cannot expect this result. And uh, his uh, example was like this, Pfefferman's probability, he defined this alpha star. So alpha star of x is uh, defined as, again, think about the arithmetic. Alpha is an axiom of piano arithmetic in the ordinary sense, and uh, I define it like this. The first x axioms of the axioms of piano arithmetic with Gödel number smaller or equal x are consistent. Now, formally alpha restricted to x is simply defined as alpha of x and <coughs> x is smaller uh, to, um, uh, alpha restricted to n alpha of uh, x is smaller than n. Okay, so this is also enumeration depending on the parameter n. Now what happens here, we define in having from the standard enumeration of piano arithmetic standard definition of axioms, we uh, twist it in this way. We just 
essentially accept x as an axiom if it really is an axiom plus we know that all axioms with good numbers before x are actually consistent so we only actually accept here x as an axiom if we know already that x would not generate a contradiction yeah. before x and in including x. yes exactly <laughs> exactly including x so smaller or equal x so it is not a surprise a big surprise that in fact piano proves consistency of that alpha star <coughs> but the point is uh, that this alpha star also in the standard model we have that alpha star of x is the same as alpha this, is, this follows from the following well-known property of piano arithmetic, that piano arithmetic proves consistency of each of its, its finitely axiomatized subseries, so-called reflexivity. So for every n, for every n, piano arithmetic... If about standard model, why should we bother about probability? Uh, wait a moment. <laughs> because here we have consistency. Wait a moment. No, probably we pass it to the proof. Or uh, no, no, we, we don't proceed to the proof, but uh, we proceed to the explanation of a uh, of a different. It's it's a proof of that fact, no, no. fact written about. But this is standard model. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, yes. In standard model, in standard model, yes. the second thing is true Identity. independently of yeah, whether the maybe Leah's uh, meta theory is different from set theory. No, I uh, it's, it's, it doesn't okay. Like okay. 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 Okay.